This video is sponsored by Vanguard. Check out vanguardworld.com for tripods, camera bags and cases to suit all budgets. Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and in this video I want to give you my full review of this, the Sony DSC RX10. This is a sort of what I would call an advanced bridge camera, but it is so much more than that. And I just want to tell you a little bit of background about why I actually love this camera. Now, first of all, I have been using this camera here on an X shot, which is my sort of extending arm. This is the Sony RX100 Mark II. And I've been using this to produce uh, some of my personal videos on a daily basis. And also, I've been using it to take photos and to produce a few other videos as well. And this contains a one inch sensor, some really nice features, all in a compact body. Well, Sony took things a stage further and they launched this, the RX10. Now, if you haven't seen my unboxing of this camera, I do urge you to check out the link in the video description. Uh, the unboxing shows you everything you get for your money and this isn't a cheap camera, it's coming in at just under a thousand pounds. I've also done a 1080p HD video test and again, if you haven't seen that, I do urge you to check that out as well. Again, a link in the video description, purely because it shows you what this camera can actually achieve. Now, what they've done is they've put the same one inch sensor in this. We've got a Bions 10 processor, but they've also put a really nice piece of glass on the front. This is a Carl Zeiss lens, very, very nice lens. And it doesn't give a massive zoom range, but a good enough zoom range. Let me show you this uh, zoom range in action. And I just wanna show you, you can zoom using this here, and you can have it set to us like a step zoom. So let me just show you that close up. So I'm just turning it a little bit, and then it's stepping that zoom in, see, in steps. Now you can set it to be one smooth continuous zoom, but you can see the actual range you've got there. It's actually 24 to 200 millimeters, but it's at a constant f2.8 aperture, which is really good, because it means when I'm zooming in, I haven't got to worry about the aperture fluctuating, so very, very good indeed. And as I say, I've got that set to a step zoom, so it's, it does these sort of set increments on the zoom, but you can set it to have just one smooth zoom. Now, the other really nice feature of this camera is the actual aperture ring. The, the aperture ring is set just behind that zoom control. And you can set that to either have a click on it. So if you're taking photos, it can go click, click, click around the barrel there. Or if you're using it for video, you can set it to a clickless aperture ring. So it's not gonna click as you move this dial round. Again, very well thought out. Now, a lot of people, when they saw my unboxing of this, and indeed the video sample, said, why would you spend that much money on a camera just with a one inch sensor? You can get so much more for your money. In fact, you could buy a, a DSLR where you could change the lenses in and out, and it would give you better results. Well, that's not entirely true. The way this samples every single pixel on the sensor when you're recording video means it captures a massive amount of detail. And in fact, I would really argue the fact that this captures more detail than an entry to mid-level DSLR with a larger sensor. The fact that you've got it coupled with really good optics on the front here as well, really does deliver a compelling package with some really awesome video features. Now don't forget this has got autofocus during video and it's also got that fixed aperture throughout the zoom range. You haven't got to worry about changing lenses. In fact, another challenge for you, and I challenge a lot of people who buy DSLRs, how many of you actually bother changing from the kit lens? Probably not very many. Using myself as an example, I'm recording this video on a Panasonic DMC G6 with a kit lens on it. I've got other lenses for it, but I can't remember the last time I changed from the kit lens, purely because it's a production camera for me and I use the best lens suited to the job and the kit lens produces good enough video. And it's the same with this. Yes, I haven't got the option of changing the lens, but would I really want to? No, I wouldn't, because this is a fantastic piece of glass on the front. So, that said, what else do I like and what else don't I like about this? Well, first of all, I'll, get, I'll go over some of the dislikes. First of all, this screen on the back, it's very good quality, but it's not fully articulating, and you just heard it there probably, it squeaks when you 
pull it out and lower it down. So this screen just sort of tilts up to this angle and it also tilts down to this angle. So it's great for photography for high and low shots, uh, but it doesn't fully articulate round. So if I'm recording myself, you can't sort of see what you're recording. Uh, the other thing I don't like is the battery life is okay, but it's not as good as that Sony RX100 Mark II that I showed you. I suppose it's doing a lot more and moving a lot more mechanics around in this larger body, but it doesn't last as long. The other thing I didn't particularly like is how you set the white balance on the Sony and also how you can control it with uh, the smartphone app. This particular one, I couldn't start and stop recording with the smartphone app, for example. So I think Sony needs to do some work in that respect. Uh, the things I do like though, and I like a lot about this camera, are the array of ports on the side. Now I showed you this in the unboxing, but you've basically got HDMI, you've got a, a sort of an AV port as well, you've got microphone in and headphones out, so you can actually monitor the sound on your videos. So that's really nice. And I also like the uh, sort of the handling of the camera, it feels very nice indeed. And I did record some of my review videos with this just to test it using the built-in microphones which are placed really nicely at the top here just on either side of the hot shoe and they capture some brilliant audio and when you're recording very quiet audio they are very very low on noise i hate it when you get a camera and you're just sort of sitting there silently or standing silent with the camera and you get this hiss coming from the microphones these are very clean microphones. They've done a brilliant job on this. And it really shouts at what uh, Sony have sort of aimed this at. Yes, it is fantastic for taking photos. It hasn't got a great reach on the zoom lens, but for a general sort of holiday camera, uh, a camera that you take everywhere with you, it's got some great photographic features and really good crystal clear images and fairly noise free right up to probably about ISO 1600 or 3200 at a push. But where they've really targeted this is at being a great video camera as well. Not many people buy camcorders nowadays, they're moving across to DSLRs. And I find a lot of people struggling with DSLRs because of course they don't offer up great autofocus. With this, the autofocus is very, very good indeed. It's not as quick as a camcorder, uh, but it's so, so close to it. In fact, you'd be hard pushed to tell the difference. And if I was choosing between this and a camcorder of a similar price, I would probably choose the RX10 every single time. It has got some really wonderful ergonomics and excellent results for both photos and video, and I think it's worthy of its asking price. Of course, in an ideal world, it would be cheaper. Of course it would. We would all love these fantastic cameras for next to nothing, but that's not gonna happen. Um, but overall, I, I just, I've really fallen for this camera. It does produce some excellent results. I was really surprised actually with how much I liked the video output from the RX10. So if you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comment section below. Again, don't forget to check out the link so you can see my unboxing and the full HD video test because that gives you a really good idea of how this actually performs. I can tell you how it performs, but if you see it with your own eyes, then it's sort of a lot more compelling to, to actually watch. So, the Sony RX10, who's it for? Well, I think it's for somebody who wants a camera that can do pretty much everything without having to worry about additional lenses and offers up some really, really excellent quality photo and video performance. So thanks very much for watching. Please do hit that like button and I'll see you all in the next video.